Okay, so far when we've been looking at our graph search algorithms, we've only talked about um, graphs that have uh, that are unweighted graphs. Now we're going to talk about um, weighted graphs. And um, as I said so far, we've assumed that all edges have the same cost. But of course, you know that sometimes we have graphs where edges have different weights, right? Where where maybe it only costs you one unit to get from MO to CH. Um, and let's say, I don't know, one unit MOCH, five unit CHFS, uh, or you can go MO to WS to FS, and it looks like it's seven to get to FS in that direction, but only six to get to FS in that direction. So, you know, maybe you want to take that route to get to FS, right? So I'm going to show you, um, oh, sorry, this is the breadth first search algorithm that we saw before. I pulled off multipath pruning just so you could see it uh, a little bit more easily, the breadth first search. Uh, that we are doing in here. Of course, our frontier is a queue and um, and we add stuff onto the queue. Um, lowest cost first search is almost exactly the same, except instead of using a queue, we use a priority queue. And the priority queue is ordered by path cost. So the key in understanding how lowest cost first search works and how it's different is remembering what the heck is a priority queue. So let's talk about that. Um, the way a priority queue works is that you have a head of the queue and a tail of the queue. And I apologize, most of my heads of my queues and my examples have been on the left, but here the head is on the right. And the element with the lowest cost is always at the front of the queue. So in this case, 100 is lower than 500, so it goes on the right here. Um, and let's just see how does the NQ uh, function work. Well, let's suppose that I have this queue that has 531 in it, um, and I want to add this 2 onto it, right? So so uh, an element with a priority 2. So when I add it to the queue, it doesn't just go to the back of the queue as normal. It actually gets shoved in in the appropriate place, right? So that's NQ added to the queue. And of course, DQ is the uh, similar thing in the other direction. So if you're trying to DQ something um, and, uh, sorry, it's not the same thing in the other direction. If you're trying to DQ something, you always take what's at the front, right? So in this case, if I DQ something off the front, um, I end up with a shorter Q there. Um, so let me do an example on AI space uh, to show you lowest cost first search and I will um, do it using um, uh, this Vancouver neighborhood graph. So hang on, let me get that set up. So here's the AI space tool. Um, I am going to uh, show the legend over here in the corner just so you can see what the different colors uh, represent. And I said I want to load the Vancouver neighborhood graph. There we go. Um, and I am going to go into view now and I'm going to click on show edge costs so we can see the actual costs in here. And if you look, um, if you look at this, you can see that the uh, start node is the purple node in here. So we're starting at UBC. Um, and we are going to our goal node, which is SP. And of course, again, we could have multiple goal nodes if we wanted to. In this case, we just have one. All right, so let us do this lowest cost search demo. So I better, let's go into solve mode and we'll go into search options and we're gonna do lowest cost first search instead of depth first or breadth first like we've been doing recently. Um, and there's not a very good way to show you this much, much bigger. So we will just see how it goes. Um, I suppose I could drag stuff out a little bit, but I don't really think it's going to help you all that much. So um, let's see if I go to the view font size, we'll make it large, but not extra large. Yeah, that's just beautiful. Hang on. Okay, I've squidged this up a little bit. It's probably a little bit less authentic in terms of um, uh, Vancouver, but um, 
it, it fits a little bit better. In fact, let me pause again and just squidge a little bit more. You can watch me squidge for a minute so you can see what I'm doing in here in case you use the tool. Um, so uh, I've selected select and I'm just going to kind of move stuff up just a little bit more. I want you to be able to see the weights on these edges, but it would be really nice. There we go. That's just a little bit flatter so that when we go into solve, there you go. Look at that. That's not so bad. And we can do that and stretch this out a little bit. Great. Okay. Um, and so remember, we are doing the same basic algorithm, but we now are using a priority queue. So I'll do find step just to show you what I'm doing here. All right. So starting at UBC, going to SP, and remember, we are doing lowest cost first search. So we have a priority queue. So I'll do a find step. We'll take UBC off of the frontier. We will find its neighbors, right? There's just two of them. And we will add them back to the frontier. Now notice they both have a um, distance, a path cost of three. So they're put onto the frontier um, in arbitrary order. The front of the um, priority queue is at the top of this list. Okay, so now we will take off this path UBC to KD. So let's take a fine step. We take that off. We say, who are the neighbors? Well, we've got JB and MP. Um, if I do the UBCKD to JB, that's seven. Well, let's do the step to show you who the neighbors are, right? Um, now the order they get put back on has to do with the past co path cost. So as I said, UBCKD to JB, well, that's seven. UBCKD to MP, that's six. So we would expect the UBCKD to MP to show up on the frontier higher in this list, right? Um, higher priority than the other one. So if we do a fine step, look at that. The UBC to KD to MP, right? This one appears earlier in or higher up in our priority queue has better priority than, than the other one, right? So if we take another fine step, um, we take the uh, UBC to JB off the frontier. It has only one neighbor, right? So that's going to be pretty boring. We just put that back on. What was the distance there? It was seven, right? So seven, so it arbitrarily goes either in front or below this one. Now we'll take off this um, path to MP, UBC KD to MP, right? And we will um, pop that off. Shouldn't really say pop, but we'll take it off of our queue. Um, sorry, off of our priority queue, off the frontier. Um, and now we're going to um, look at the neighbors of MP. So let's do a fine step. And MP has a bunch of neighbors. And if I take another fine step, you'll see all those neighbors got put on here. Here's the three neighbors from MP, right? And MP's three neighbors got put on in terms of the total path length, right? So UBC to KD to MP to RM, UBC to KD to MP to RM has three plus three plus three is nine. And so that has a path cost of nine. Look at that. But UBC KD MP KB, UBC KD MP KB is four plus three plus three. So that's 10. So that's got a path cost of 10 in here, right? Okay, so let's do a few more steps. We'll take another fine step. Um, so we took that UBC to KD to JB off because that had the lowest cost, right? We find the neighbors of JB. It's just this KB, right? So we'll take a fine step. And that will be three and four is seven and four is 11. So that's gonna get added on either right before this one or right after. I think the way this algorithm does it is it puts it at the very back of the queue. So there you go. Take the front of the queue off again, which goes to KB. And look, this one gets to KB in 11, but this one gets to KB in seven. So that's looking much better. So we'll take a fine step and we'll find the neighbors. There's two neighbors. And we will add those new paths on in the order that they appear, right? So we're taking them on and we have the, um, stop it. We have, uh, UBC to JB, sorry, UBC to KD to MP to RM. Where's RM down here? Um, that appears higher because things, if there's a tie in the priority queue, it looks like it puts the newer one on um, later and that's okay. 
same priority, we'll get through it. Let's do another find step. So we'll take that first one off with RM. We'll find the neighbors of RM. And one of them, that SRY thing is far. So let's see what happens. So there we go. So here's our new frontier, right? With all these paths. Um, now we'll pull this guy off again, find step. Who are the neighbors of DT? It's just SP. And let's see, three and four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so that's gonna get put on behind that guy, right? So we got the neighbors and we're gonna put it back on. And we need to just check that this 10 hasn't solved it yet, right? So let's see, what do we get here? So, oh, there's a bunch of 11s. All right, so we'll take a fine step. We pull this guy off, we find all its neighbors. And we add all its neighbors on by figuring out how long they are and adding them. So we're gonna have three, six, 10 plus six is 16 to get to this one and 12 to get to that one. So we'll take a fine step and there's our 16 and there's the 12, right? That's what we just added. I'll show you the front of the priority queue because that's a little bit more interesting to us right now. And we're almost there. We'll pop something off. Right, we will find the neighbors. Oh, it doesn't have any neighbors, right? There's no out arrows, so it just goes away, we're done. And now we take the next one and we're doing this one with KB. Remember that every time we take something off of the frontier, we check is the very end of the path the goal. So is the very end of the path the goal? No, it's not the path the goal. Let's take another fine step. Okay, we got the neighbors. Let's put them back on in priority order. And where are we? What's the top priority queue? Look at that, something goes to SP. So we're gonna take it off the queue, finally, priority queue. And we're gonna say, hey, check it out. That's a goal, so we win. Yay, we found the goal, right? Path cost 11, cool. Okay, so here's um, another interesting um, graph uh, with weighted edges that I've put into the AI space tool. And this graph has um, a deceptively, if you're just looking at the weights as you go along using lowest cost first search, which is what we're gonna do, um, it looks like this path is pretty good, right? There's one, two, three, four, up to get to know four, it's only four uh, units long, whereas to get to node five, it's in one jump, it's eight, but of course, if you do the whole path to the goal along this top route, you see it costs you 504 units, coins, whatever they are. Uh, and if you go this path, it's 10, which seems pretty low once you deal with that 500, right? Okay, so let's just see what happens. Um, of course, we're using a uh, priority queue because we're doing lowest cost first search. So I'll just do it by fine step. I'm gonna take something off the queue, off the frontier. I check is start the goal, no it's not. So we will find its neighbors, right? Node one and node five. And then we will add those neighbors back onto our priority queue in um, cost order of the path we've done so far, which means that start to node five goes behind start to node one, right? Do it again, let's pull something off, right? Uh, is node one the goal? No, so let's see its neighbors, it's just node two. Um, and let's put that back on the priority queue. And again, that's gonna be up at the front of the priority queue because it only costs two units, right? Let's take it off. Let's, uh, is node two the goal? No, so let's add it back on again. Node two, who are the neighbors? Let's add that path on and oh yeah, look, that's still up at the front. Let's cover up the legend so you can see the whole thing here, right? Okay, another fine step. Node three, not the goal. So we find its neighbors add that back on again, still looking good, right? So we're gonna pull this guy off next, find step, find its neighbors. Oh, look, there's the goal, okay. Um, sorry, was node four the goal? No, so we find the neighbors. We don't say, oh, look, there's the goal, right? We don't know that's the goal yet. Um, we just know it's a neighbor. We find that path, we put it back on the priority queue and now all of a sudden the cost is 504. Right, so now this path to node five gets a bit more interesting. We um, take a fine step. We say, who are the neighbors of node five? It's just this one called goal. Um, of course we said, was node five the goal? No, node five is not the goal. So we found the neighbors and we will put that path back onto 
the frontier. But now look, this better path is near the front. And now you see why we're always waiting to declare that we found the goal until the very end. Because now, because we're using this priority queue, when we take a fine step and we pull this guy off, we'll say, is goal the goal? We'll say yes and we'll win. And look, now we've got a path um, that um, costs only 10 as opposed to the other path, which would have been nasty. So you can see that's a problem with lowest cost first search. You know, it, it, it completely depends on how the weights are. Now, um, it would be pretty hard if this were representing a map to, um, to represent uh, the edge costs like this, right? It seems unlikely that node four would be 500 miles away or something from the goal, but but maybe these are the tolls that you have to pay and, and really you would rather, oh, look, that's a one, I made it a two in the demo, but that's okay. Um, maybe, uh, you know, you wanna find that shorter path a bit faster. Well, sorry, we needed to go all the way through there and expand everything before we found the goal. So lowest cost first, not always um, the best time-wise, but in terms of finding the lowest cost um, to the goal, it is great. It is guaranteed to find the cheapest solution if the graph is finite and there is in fact a solution. If you have an infinite graph, you've got a lot more problems. Um, it still usually takes you exponential um, space and exponential time. And um, and it's going to generate every single path from the start that has a cost less than the cost of your solution. That makes sense, right? That's what we what we kind of did um, in this example. So that's uh, lowest cost search, sometimes called lowest cost first search.